Hey guys, it's good to be back with you as we jump into another daily devotional. Uh, in case this is your first time watching, we're currently going through the book of Genesis verse by verse, and our section for today, it's a big one. Uh, we're going to look at Genesis 5 verses 6 through 32, and it's just too long to read. But if you want, feel free to pause the video and read the section yourself just to get acquainted with it. But what we'll be looking at is a long list of a genealogy, and this genealogy goes from Adam all the way to Noah and his sons. So right off the bat, there are some, there's some interesting things that we can notice. The, the, this linear list of descendants starts with Seth, not Cain or Abel. And the reason why is Abel, Abel's not part of it is because he was killed by his brother and he had no offspring. But Cain did have descendants, yet we're not seeing them or his descendants here in this genealogy. Why? Well, if we look back at Genesis 4, we do see a line coming from Cain, but it was a line of wickedness. And this can be seen in the seventh generation of Cain, where a murderer is produced. And his name was Lamech. He was a wicked man. Just to give some context to that, when Cain was cursed initially for murdering Abel, he complained to God about the severity of his punishment. So God marked Cain and promised that anyone who would harm him would receive a punishment sevenfold to their crime against him. Well, Cain's descendant Lamech murdered a man simply for striking him. And then he boasted about his sin to his two wives, and he tells them, if Cain is avenged seven times, then Lamech is to be avenged 77 times. This was a wicked and arrogant response, but it seems to be in keeping with his lineage from Cain. And actually, just to add to that wickedness, it says that Lamech had two wives, which was actually the first time we see polygamy mentioned in Scripture. So, Abel's dead. And Cain's line produces wickedness, which is eventually eliminated by the time we get to the flood. Now, this means a new seed and lineage is needed for the coming Messiah. And that's what we're seeing in our section for today in Genesis 5. Adam's family tree restarts through the line of Seth. And here's an interesting note. Earlier, I mentioned that in the seventh generation of Cain, a murderer was produced. But in the line of Seth, the seventh generation produced Enoch, a man who was quite the opposite of that. He was actually so unique that he breaks the pattern of the literary structure in the genealogy, right? The pattern goes, when this person lived X years, they fathered Y. They had more sons and daughters, lived X more years, and died. But with Enoch, it stated who he fathered, but then it described him as a man who walked with God. And the Hebrew word, or the Hebrew verb for the word walked, is it's really distinctive because it's meant to convey this sense of ongoing intimacy with God. So it seems because of this special relationship, according to the genealogy, Enoch, Enoch doesn't die, but God just takes him. You know, I've always wondered what that must have been like for Enoch to never taste death. And I want to end by looking at Lamech, the father of Noah. Now this Lamech was from the line of Seth, not the, not the wicked line of Cain. But there are some interesting facts to note. First, he named his son Noah, which means rest. And says that out of the ground the Lord has cursed, this one shall bring us relief from our work and the painful toil of our hands. What does that mean? Well, some say that Lamech was hoping that his son Noah would be the long-expected fulfillment of God's promise concerning the crushing, crushing of the serpent's head. But I think there's a better explanation. Lamech lived in an evil time, and we know this because it was right before the flood. I think Lamech was announcing that even in the midst of the world's evil, his son Noah would represent righteousness and bring comfort, rest, and peace through his preaching of that in the midst of God's judgment. And lastly, notice how many years Lamech lived, 777. Now we know the other Lamech from the line of Cain was the seventh in his generation, and he boasted that he would be avenged 77 times for anyone who would harm him. Now, I don't necessarily know the significance of that, but I still think it's interesting to notice it, you know, and I'm sure that there's more to find if we did a deeper study on it. But I'll say, I know that genealogies aren't always the most exciting thing to read, and I wouldn't be surprised if people tended to skip over these. But this is a great example of the fact that if we take the time to dig in and study Scripture, there's so much for us to learn about the character of God and His purposes in and through what we may consider mundane. You know, And the more we wrestle and chew on these things, the more we continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord, even through genealogies. So, love you guys. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next week.